Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about scaling. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you consider the scale of the system when you start designing the application or do you work on scaling the application to your needs once you have a working app? So that is a little bit like asking, do you use your heart or your brain the most? Because it's both. Well, somebody can probably answer that. But I need both, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Because the, the way that experience working with different system, uh, how it sort of manifests itself usually, is that you 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 make so many applications at this is why I also think it's very healthy for people to both start at small scale like work on you know greenfield projects up to brownfield projects where like they're really really big and so forth and uh, I think it's a very healthy exercise because it gives you this ability where you start to learn how things usually change and you start to figure out how to keep yourself productive at small scale and how to still not be in a really bad position when it's time to make something more serious out of the project because the problem here is uh, it's uh, something that I've talked about in many videos where if you try to make a very sophisticated system from day one it's similar to how if you get some money to uh, make a road in a small town well if you make a super highway in the town with just a few houses the taxes and maintenance and like all the things that come with like it's going to take a long time to do that it's going to take up a lot of space and maintenance and so forth and it might actually completely destroy the town's economy because you you made this gigantic super highway when it's not really needed it's a bigger investment than what the town really needs at that time so the goal is to create a dirt road a really good dirt road that fits the use cases everybody's happy with it and it's affordable but with the idea that if the town starts growing the cost of transitioning in to a super highway or like something more serious isn't all that high that is what I try to do that is what I always try to do and it very much depends on what type of products I'm dealing with uh, so an example would be my f if I give you something concrete one of my favorite things to do when I work on personal projects especially the ones where uh, if, if it's a product I already sort of built a million times before it's an archetype of like a standard MVC type of layered architecture with the database or something like that I, I don't really do this I have that stuff in my back the back of my head already but if it's something that is a bit experimental I try to uh, this is one of those instances, instances where I really think that uh, experience uh, working with uh, a more functional approach it really helps because you don't I, I don't really know what the code is going to look like in three three weeks because I'm experimenting and so what I like to do is to just create a folder structure where I don't really try to group things all that semantically any, or anything like that I basically treat my folder as just one big RPC the API if that makes sense where each file is just the module that holds a bunch of functions that takes in some type of input and externs something which I'm not saying they have to be completely pure but I don't couple things I don't try to really go all that heavy on semantics and domain models and things like that because I'm experimenting I'm trying to figure stuff out so my main focus in that scenario is to create a way for me to play around in my sandbox code and try to see what's going to work and what's not going to work in a way so that if I wanted to rewrite it or like sh make it into something clean and scalable I can change that without all that much hassle but at the same time I don't want to have to answer all of those questions about long-term perspectives at this stage because I simply don't know what's going to be the next thing I'm going to work on right and I argue that people should think about the it in a similar sort of way it's sort of the same the same way I argue that people should use microservices 
you should start with a monolithic application for the reason that it's usually easier to move really quickly in a small system in, when you're using a monolithic application than it is to use microservices because they take more energy and more time to maintain than just doing the simple thing. But you should, that should not mean that you use that as an excuse to write really shitty code that cannot be converted into microservices, if that makes sense. So the pattern that I suggest to a lot of people is to use something like a monorepo or creating modules in a similar fashion to a kernel pattern or something like that, where you make a very clean cut between the different areas of your code. They don't have to be like super advanced or anything like that. It can just be a separate folder for all the different things, right? And then you work and you work until you get to a point where you realize that, well, you're starting to see some issues or might, might need a few unit tests and so forth. You get to growth ache land. And growth ache, for those of you who don't know it, is usually what we call when a system has scaled to a point where it's hard for you to continue scaling and now you just need to change the architecture or your approach to doing work and it usually manifests itself either through that there's a lot of bugs or a lot of toil and like problems when you want to deploy things you add more people you get in each other's ways there's collisions stuff like that you're starting to bump into things right and when you're at that point that's when you really actually want to think about scalability and if you've done your done what I've said now changing the way that your code works into a more structured work process or maybe splitting some segments of the code out into a microservice or like whatever you're you know, however you want to do it right should be fairly cheap because you haven't created this big ball of uh, like uh, logic that is very tightly coupled and that is why I believe that loose coupling and disposable code, as I like to call it, are the key factors that makes uh, it, it, it solves the problem of scalability. Because, as I said, it's really dangerous and it's really costly to try to predict what your system is going to look like in the early days. So in many cases, it's much better to just do what's right for the moment in the early days, but to do it in such a way that you know that if you need to lift things out or need to change things radically, you can do so without a lot of cost. So what I want you to take away from this is that, well, for me at the very least, uh, I don't think about scaling my system in terms of, oh, what is this system going to look like in 10 years? Do I need to use like all these more advanced concepts that are usually more sensible at large scale? in the early days so as an example I think that it's hilarious that some people use microservices on their toy little mini project that they start because if you do that for no other reason than hey it's gonna scale then you're basically as I said then you're paying for that super highway very early on it's a lot of cost for no reason because changing from say a monorepo type of thing or the thing that I was talking about just having different kernel pattern modules that you can then move into uh, separate services is like nothing. It takes less than a day to do something like that uh, when you're doing microservices and so forth. So when you get to that point you can make that conversion very cheaply. Um, but at small scale it's faster to work that way usually than it is to have all this complexity. And it's not just microservices. There are many patterns that people kind of use for no other reason than you know it's going to scale, right? So that is my suggestion to you. Keep it simple stupid in the early days because in the early days you're usually very experimental. You're, you're trying to move fast and that is the priority and you should really not make things more complicated until it gets to a point where you realize that this faster workflow is actually starting to cause you some problems and that's when it's such a great benefit if you've already made sure that the way you structured things is done in such a way that it's very easy for you to just lift out let's say that you add another person or more people to the teams and so forth well then maybe you should split the application into two applications well, okay here's the code that has the thing that they are doing move it over there simple easy PC and now you like you reduce the problem uh, and simplify your work process have a great day